Hello everybody, here is uh, the problem set on rotational motion. First question talks about a gyroscope accelerated from rest to 32 radians per second in 0.4 seconds. What is its angular acceleration and how many revolutions does it go through in the process? So when it says it's initially at rest, you know its initial angular speed is zero. And its final is given as 32 and the time is there to find the alpha which is angular acceleration. Use this formula omega 2 minus omega 1 by delta t. When you calculate that, you get 80 radians per second squared. Okay. And then in the B part, it says how many revolutions does it go through in the process? So you're looking for the number of rotations it makes for this to happen, for it to go from 0 to 32 radians per second. So the idea is to first find the angle. The total angle can be found out using... The equation theta is equal to omega 1 t plus 1 half a t squared. Or you can use this equation, omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 times delta t. And this is an easier option. Well, omega 1 is 0, so I have not written it. That's just omega 2, which is 32. get 6.4 radians and since we know that in one rotation the angle describes is 2 pi all you got to do is divide this angle by 2 pi to get the number of rotations that's 1.0 revolutions just makes one revolution before it speeds up. Second question. Soccer player is kicking the ball and exerting a force with the muscle above the knee in the front of her leg. She produces an angular acceleration, so that's alpha, and her lower leg has a moment of inertia, that's I, so I and alpha are given. So since you have I and alpha, first you can find the torque. Tau is torque. And there are two formulas for calculating torque. I've put them both together. One is the perpendicular distance multiplied by the force. And the other is moment of inertia times angular acceleration. I put them together, make F the subject, that's I, alpha, and the radius. Okay, the radius is in centimeters, so I've changed it into meters here, dividing by 100, of course. And you get that as 1.18 times 10 to the 3 newtons. That's a huge force. It definitely is. In question 3, a force of 180 newtons is applied tangential to a 0.280 meter radius. It's a disc and its mass is 75 kilograms. What is the torque? So you have the force and you have the radius. Force and the radius. And to find the torque, just multiply the radius with the force. Fifty point four 
Newton meter. Notice the unit. In the B part, you have to find the angular acceleration. And uh, you neglect friction. So in the B part, you do not consider friction. Now for that, use the other equation for torque, which is I alpha. And since you already know tau is 50.4, you can rearrange this equation and calculate alpha. 50.4 divided by I. Now, I for a disk is given by mR squared by 2 or 1 half mR squared. Same thing. So, 1 half times the mass, which is 70, times the radius squared. This is 0 0.280. Okay. Now remember that is the whole thing is the moment of inertia of a disc. Gives you 17.1 radian per second squared. In the C part, you're asked to find the angular acceleration again, but this time you got to consider the friction. It's given as 20 newtons exerted 1.5 centimeter from the axis so what you do now is find the torque due to friction uh, that's why I put it as tau f <coughs> excuse me so that is because you know this number is 1.5 centimeters changed into meters and the force is 20 newtons so that's the torque due to friction. Therefore, the net torque is see, friction is always opposing, so you take away that from what you got before. So, before you had 50.4, now friction opposes it by that much. So the net is 50.1. Now once again calculate alpha with the new torque. Which is 50.1 by 1 half mR squared. Well if you had written this number down I could have just transferred it here. But since I did not I got to do it all over again. That is 17 Oh, just a small difference. But there is a difference. Number four. This is about punting a football. Now the leg is rotated about the hip joint. The moment of inertia is given. Rotational kinetic energy is given. What's the angular velocity? Rotational kinetic energy is what? One half times the moment of inertia times the square of the angular speed. Just like one half mv squared, you have one half i omega squared. And therefore, I rearranged and made omega the subject. Of course, there's going to be a square root to get rid of the square here. Okay. Now all numbers are given. Just calculate it. You get omega as 9.66 radians per second. And in the B part, you have to find the velocity of the tip of the punter's shoe if it is 1.05 meter from the hip joint. Okay. How do you find the linear velocity? It's the radius multiplied by the angular velocity. So that equation is important. The radius is 1.05 and omega is what we got here. So that gives 10.1 meter per second. And C says, explain how the football can be given a velocity greater than the tip of the shoe. That's obviously because the mass of the leg is much greater than the mass of the football. And it is momentum that is conserved. It's not velocity that is conserved. It is momentum. So even if a heavier mass has a smaller velocity, 
when it collides with a lighter mass, that lighter mass is going to just fly off. That's what happened to the football. It's because of conservation of momentum. Okay, in this question, a merry-go-round in a playground, mass given, 120 kilograms, radius is 1.80 meter, and it's rotating with an omega, 0.5. What is its angular velocity after a 22 kilogram child gets onto it by grabbing its outer edge? Now, here you have to apply the conservation of momentum, conservation of angular momentum. Okay, according to the conservation of angular momentum, I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2. That means angular momentum is conserved because I omega is the formula for angular momentum. Well, I'm using I prime, omega prime, same thing. And now what's going to happen is when the child gets on to the merry-go-round, the total moment of inertia of that merry-go-round increases. So that's I prime. So I prime is the original moment of inertia I plus MR squared. That's the moment of inertia of the child. Now why is it MR squared for a child? Because it can be taken as a particle. Okay, so that's the formula for moment of inertia of a particle. So now When you rearrange this equation and make omega prime the subject, this is what you get. And then now you substitute for I prime. Okay, but first I is one half MR squared because the merry-go-round is a disk. So it's one half MR squared divided by I prime is one half MR squared plus that of the child, which is MR squared times omega. Okay, when you simplify this, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying throughout by 2. Multiply each term by 2. So here the halves will get cancelled. I get a 2 there. So, and of course the r squared will get cancelled. The R squared, okay, then I put the 2 there and then substitute 120. You get 120 by 164 times 0.5 when you do that, which gives 0.366 revolutions per second. Okay, so that was, I had to do that because, you know, this was not really omega. It was just revolutions per second. That's why the final answer here is in revolutions per second. And to change it into radians per second, you have to multiply with 2 pi, okay? Because in one revolution, the angle covered is 2 pi. So, to find the total angle, of course, you have to multiply the number with 2 pi. In number 6, you have a 10 kilogram motorcycle wheel shown in the figure. Assume it to be approximately an annular ring. Now, it's a ring. Inner radius and outer radius both given. The motorcycle on it is on its center stand. And if the drive chain exerts a force of 2300 Newton at a radius of 5 centimeter, what's the ex angular acceleration? Okay, the A part, as we've done many times before, torque is I alpha. And this time I is, okay, make alpha the subject, it's tau by I. And tau is RF. And for an annular ring, the moment of inertia is given by m times 
R squared minus R squared by 2. So when you do that, that's just radius and force it's 10 you get 84.6 radian per second squared In the B part, what is the tangential acceleration of a point? See, now that's not angular acceleration. That is something else. So we can find the tangential acceleration by using this equation R alpha. Now, how do you remember that? Just remember, just like linear velocity was radius times angular velocity, in the same way, linear acceleration is radius times angular acceleration. So it's the same format. And then you substitute the numbers. You get 37.2 meter per second squared. And then how long does it take starting from rest? So the initial angular velocity is zero because it says rest. And the final is 80 and you are asked to find the time. That's easy because you already know alpha. Okay. So you know omega 1 is zero. Omega 2 is 80 radians per second. You give an alpha. 84, I mean, you calculated alpha is 84.6 right here and use the equation alpha is change in angular velocity divided by time. Rearrange uh, that to make time the subject. And you get the time as 80 divided by 84.6 well obviously you cannot see that so I'm reading it it's 0 0.946 0 0.946 well it was not so smart to have the smart physics right there anyway it's 0 0.946 seconds brings us to the seventh one Here you have a solid cylinder mounted above the ground with its axis of rotation oriented horizontally. A rope is wound around the cylinder. Okay, that's the rope going around the cylinder. And its free end is attached to a block of mass. You see the block? 65.5 kilogram. That is resting on a platform. Okay, that thing is on a platform. And... Uh, the cylinder has a mass of 255 kilogram. Its radius is 0 0.330 meter. And assume that the cylinder can rotate about, an axis, uh, about its axis without any friction and neglect the mass of the rope. The platform is suddenly removed. So there is an imaginary platform here. And if you remove the platform, what's going to happen is this mass is going to fall. When this falls, the rope, because it's wound over it, is going to make this cylinder to rotate. Uh, that's what it says, and you have to find the angular acceleration. It's a big story to give the whole setup, but it's not so tough to do it. You're looking for alpha, aren't you? And we know that torque is I alpha. Now, this is a cylinder. Okay, well, first let's make alpha the subject. And torque is radius times force, and because this is a cylinder, and it's it, it, we're going to take it as a disc in this case. And what's the moment of inertia of a disc? 
because essentially the disc and the cylinder are the same because every cylinder is a disc. It's mR squared by 2. Okay, that's what came up now. That's the mass. This is the radius squared divided by 2. You got to calculate this carefully. Get 15.25 radians per second. Second squared. In the B part, how many revolutions does the cylinder make in 5 seconds? You're asked to find the number of revolutions, so first find theta. Okay, theta is omega 1t plus 1 half alpha t squared. You can even find that using omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 times t. Either of the equations will give you theta. Okay, and uh, once you get theta, you just divide it by 2 pi. We've done this before. Uh, because one rotation is equal to 2 pi radians, correct? Therefore, you just divide that angle by 2 pi to get the number of revolutions. And then uh, the last part says how much of the rope unwinds. That means you got to find the linear displacement. The length of the rope, it's a length. How do you find that? The length that it's un going to unwind in one rotation is the circumference. The, it, since it makes n rotations, the total length is the total. I mean, is the circumference multiplied by the total number of rotations, right? So that's why you have the formula circumference 2 pi r times n, which is 38.40 meter. What is the final velocity of a solid sphere that rolls down an 8 meter hill starting from rest? What would be the final velocity if a disk of the same mass and radius as the sphere rolled down the hill? Okay. The solid sphere rolling down has both rotational kinetic energy and translational kinetic energy. Because remember, its center is moving in a straight line. But it's rotating at the same time, so it has both. And therefore, we know that whatever potential energy it had at the top is going to get converted into the sum of both these two kinetic energies according to the conservation of energy. So, mgh is equal to one half i omega squared, which is the kinetic energy of rotation, plus one half mv squared, which is the Translational kinetic energy. I don't know where the one half is. Okay. And for a sphere, the moment of inertia is 2 by 5 mR squared. So I'm going to use 2 by 5 mR squared for the I here. And omega is linear velocity divided by radius. Both have to be squared now plus okay now there is the one half I had forgotten to write that okay one half mv squared okay now see you simplify this because uh, actually the masses get cancelled you know throughout so you can even go ahead and cancel the mass Masses get cancelled there. Radius got cancelled and you can look at it and you see here, here you have 1 by 5 here and here you have 1 by 2. Right? 1 by 5 plus 1 by 2 becomes 7 by 10. And, uh, and you have V squared. So rearrange that to make uh, velocity the subject.
and you get 10 times 9.8 times 8 by 7. Square root of that gives you 10.6 meter per second. Okay, what about if it is a disk? The only thing that's going to change is the formula for the moment of inertia of a disk. So in place of 2 by 5 mR squared, you're going to write 1 by 2 mR squared. Yeah, 1 half mR squared. That's it. No other change. There it is. That's the moment of inertia of a disk. Everything else is the same. Cancel out the terms that we did last time. But here you see 1 by 4. You see 1 by 2. 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 is 3 by 4. When you rearrange that and calculate, you get square root 4 gh by 3 which is 4 times 9.8 times 8 by 3 which gives you 10.22 meter per second.